met with resident Vermont gold expert Scott Washburn for a little advice on these quart samples. So Scott suggested that we try two different things. The first would be to just run them over a metal detector. That's disappointing. Extremely. And the second would be to crush up the samples and pan them like you normally would. I'm not seeing anything. No gold in Chaos Canyon. But the DeGrau tail is said to take place in two different places in Vermont. Here in Chaos Canyon and also a place called Hell's Half Acre, Bristol, Vermont. And maybe it's fate, I received an email. He knows the location of the vault and he's willing to show us where it is. The following is read from the Boston Globe newspaper, September 6th, 1903. Go back four score years to the pioneer era when Bristol was still called Pocock and its inhabitants were few. During the early days of one spring, an old man, rough and uncanny, made his appearance in the neighborhood. He was veritably a stranger in a strange land and his language was not understood very readily. A week, perhaps later, he was discovered by some boys digging among the rocks. The boys reported their discovery to the elders, who straight away commanded the stranger to disclose his identity and his business. Accordingly, the prospector unbent himself and said that his name was Robert de Grau and that he came from Spain. His father, he said, was a miner who, in traveling through these parts with a party of adventurers a few years before, had found a rich vein of silver. He said that de Grau Sr. had imparted a general idea of the location of the vein to him, and he had come to Pocock from Spain to seek for the treasure. He said that his father had informed him that the silver and tools had been sealed up in a disused Indian oven, and the aperture closed and made to look natural by moss and other vegetation being placed over the face of the rock. The party then swore themselves to secrecy and returned to Spain. We sat down and spoke for hours with the author of the mysterious email promising the location of the vault. He cited an old book that tells of de Grau taking walks down by a river near the center of town and concluded, this may be the location of the vault itself. He went on to say, details in this book seem to point to Bartlett Falls, where not only a stone oven sits on the water, but also an adjacent cave. So we've arrived to Bartlett Falls. It's enormous. So now we're gonna have to somehow find a, find a way to get to the other side of the river and we'll check out the inside. Hope there's no booby traps. I hope not. We're here. So we made it to the front of the oven, but there's too much water. We're not going to be able to get in the front, so we're going to go explore the top. And then maybe the side right here has a hole. It was the secret passage. It was. Shall we go in? Wow. This is nuts. Careful. Ooh. We're in the oven. So he had said that obviously the bottom here is all filled in with soil. The bottom opening is way down there. We would have a lot of digging to do if we wanted to get to the bottom. Mm. But there's also a side cave behind this which we can check out. Shall we check out the side cave? Yes. 
You going in? I'm going in. Dude. I'm in. I'm in. So looking around, can you stand up over there, Eddie? Go try. I can try. For a sense of scale here. Oh, I, I can. I can't stand. I could probably even go on my tippy toes. This is a big cave, whether it's natural or artificial, man-made, it's hard to say. But uh, I did bring a metal detector. Should we check it out? Oh yeah, we're here. This is it. Nothing solid, unfortunately. Now, nothing nice and non-ferrous like a silver ingot, unfortunately. Lots of little chirps, but that's all uh, iron. All right, let's get out of here. So this oven is awesome. I can absolutely see DeGrau hiding a treasure in here. Oh yeah. It's like the perfect spot too. It's like right under the town's nose. The town's like right down the road here. You know, it's a little out of the way. I don't think anyone would be crazy enough to climb in here. No, I love the idea that it was right under the town's nose. Uh, but unfortunately, I did a lot of research on this particular area. This oven in its day was a forge. It was built around 1855 and it was owned by the S. Bartlett Co. They made plows and uh, they forged iron probably right in this oven. It's a little too late for the grouse time. Yeah, it's about 50 years too late. Uh, so I'm afraid this might be a dead end. But over the last 200 years, there have been many attempts to find the treasure. By far, the largest attempt ever to find this happened right up that hill in a place called Hell's Half Acre in 1840. And that's where we're going right now. The following is once again read from the Boston Globe newspaper, 1903. Hitch your horses and prepare for a genuine mountain climb. When you reach the long since deserted workings upon what was supposed to be the treasure house of the Algonquin Indians, you will find what? Rocks, ledges, and stately spruces garbled and gnarly. Such is it today in its gloomy solitude but a far different scene would have met your eye 55 years ago. Then, night and day, money-digging enthusiasts with picks, drills, and gunpowder labored to wrest from its supposed hiding place the vast, massive wealth that was reputed to be beneath the rocks. And these men who were making all this uproar, these men blackened with powder and smirched with grime, were money-diggers. Veritable troglodytes, they dwelt in caves. For half an acre, all around, the surface is literally honeycombed with holes a few feet in depth, where generation after generation of money diggers have exhausted their superstitious energies on the solid ledge in emulation of their ancestors. Well, we have met up with Bristol resident Ted Lilas who actually used to own Hell's Half Acre 20 years ago. You are the treasurer of the Bristol Historical Society, and you are the man to know to get to Hell's Half Acre and explore the money diggings that took place in 1840. I think that you're probably the most informed on this area of anybody we've ever <laughs> found yeah, or talked to. spent a lot of time collecting stuff and yes. studying. And uh, on the DeGrau uh, treasure myth uh, itself. So I'm very excited to be here with you. Thank you for bringing us up here. Not at all, my pleasure. Okay, this looks like a pile of tailings okay. right here. Yes, it does. And you can see another one over there. Yep. There were four mines dug here. Okay. 
And those four mines were dug by Simeon Corser. And uh, that was around 1840. Wow. 12 years, he and his Canadian group. There's were here. the road. Okay, yep. Yeah. We're off the road a little bit. Yep. Wow. So I have never seen, well, I don't know, would you consider these glacial erratics? Giant Dude, boulders. This is all tumbled off the, off the mountain. Off the mountain. But I've never seen them this large before in Vermont. That's where they lived. Really? Oh yes, and there are places down below where you can walk into a cave and the ceiling is still black. Well, we have to see that. From, well, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that one. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. It goes, it goes in a right ways, through. huh? Oh yes. So somebody lived in here, huh? Could be. It goes right out the other side. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Man. Doesn't look very comfortable sleeping in there. Oh, yeah. I see it. I see a hole. A hole. Yes. That is the money dig. The money dig. Right there is the mouth of the money Oh, that's the real hole. Yep. Wow. From what I understand, in 1840, Simeon came with his band of guys, yep. and they are the ones that dug these holes. That is correct. And then, like a hundred years later, another guy showed up with a bunch of dowsing rod men, the dowsers, and they dynamited a bunch of this yep. as well. You owned this land uh, 20 years ago for 20 years, Yes. and you had said, you know, like every weekend there would be a bunch of people up here searching and metal detecting. and. Yep. So people have been here searching for this particular treasure for 200 years. Yes, it's amazing how many people just quit their jobs in town. They were working for the, the lumber mills, they were working for this, working for that, and they just quit and ran up here Man. looking for the silver because everybody was sure it was here. So, you know, the original legend is that there was a man up here, he was found by some children, and he had told the townspeople, and this is where the legend kind of goes a few different directions, but essentially yeah. there was treasure here that he could not relocate. Right. The reason that Simeon dug holes was because he was accompanied by, well, what would you call them? Soothsayers yes. or psychics? Uh, actually, or... the soothsayer never came here. Oh, no kidding. The soothsayer was up on the Canadian border, and she'd say, dig here and dig this far and then turn up and you'll come up underneath the silver because she was sure that the rock slide covered the berm. Sure. And so her plan was to dig all the way up underneath the talus slide to find the silver. Right. Holy smokes. As opposed <laughs> to moving the uh... stuff on the surface. Right. Yeah, that's, man, that's interesting. So is this the only hole that remains? That's correct. But there's a room in there. The ceiling is about 10 feet and the, um, the room is about six by eight. And then there are uh, shafts that go off that room in both directions, like a, wow. horns on a bull. Yes. But they're all sanded in so that if you crawl in there, you can feel air on your face, but you can't get in. This one right here? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what about that hard act right there? This one? Yeah. yeah. That's more like it. So there's a bucket down here that Ted said was from when they excavated this years ago. 1970s. 79. 79. And it looks like I could probably scurry on my belly down into the next spot. Oh yeah, no, I'm not going in there. Yeah, there's, I could fit through this initial opening, but well, no, it doesn't look like there's any room in there, it all kind of filled in. 
man, that was awesome. That was an incredible day. That was a really good time. Have you noticed that over and over, the thing that kind of keeps coming up is the use of psychics to help find the treasure and also yeah. that the treasure is protected? Yeah, the guardians, you know. I've read stories about a demon boy and a hellhound. Ted heard something about a yeah. fire-breathing dog protecting yeah. the treasure. You know, this area has been searched probably a thousand times, even metal detected over the last 200 years. Uh, but I bet one thing that has not been used very much is using the help of a psychic since the days of Simeon, of course. Think we should get one? Couldn't hurt. We'll see you next time.